This will be tutorial 22 of our Spring Boot course API in 2019 and we actually have made so much progress. In the previous tutorial, we created a repository, a Spring Data JPA repository. And now we are going to write the methods to perform crude operation in uh, Spring Data JPA. And I explained to you that these methods are actually uh, easy to write because they have been provided uh, uh, in Spring uh, Data JPA. So that's what we are going to do. Before I continue, please subscribe. Uh, click on subscribe button below this video to subscribe so that you get updated when I make new lessons. You don't miss out anything. And also, you kind of motivate me to continue making these lessons. If you have any question or something you want, let me know. Write it in the comment box below this video. And I'm going to respond to you uh, in no time. So just click on that subscribe button to subscribe. So let's go ahead to get started. In the previous uh, lesson, we created the student class and we also added a repository. So let me open this repository we added. So we added this, this repository. Let's wait for it. Yeah, so this is the repository. It's, it's the crude repository that will help us to perform data assays. Now we are going to modify this repository or to wire the repository into the service get list of students, add student, get student by ID, update, delete, build, student controller class, and handle errors, okay? So, um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is to take the first one, because remember, there is a procedure-based lesson, so all the procedure is here, I'm not doing anything different. So if I expand it, you can see how it appears, but I'm minimizing so that uh, you can see everything. So the first thing we are going to do is to tell the crude repository the name of the class and the, the name of the class and also the, the primary key data type. So in this case, the class is student because this is a student that represents our entity, the student class. We are going to tell the repository the name of the class because this repository will actually take this class and convert it into kind of a table and instances of this class will be records in the table. Remember, we are not creating this table. JPA is creating this table and the database for us. So to specify or to tell JPA the name of the class, you simply come here and say, and simply in angular, in uh, angle braces, you simply specify the name of the class and then the data type and that's all. So that is what you do. So that is what I've done here. If you do this, then go ahead to just save everything. The next thing is to auto-wire the repository into the service. Remember that we mentioned that the service is actually getting data from the repository. So from the application viewpoint, from the service viewpoint, the database is the repository because the database and the repository kind of are combined together uh, uh, looking at it from the client side. So if data is, if you want to uh, get data, you get data from the repository. That means that we need to auto-wire this student repository into the service so that uh, any dependency that is needed will be provided by this repository. In this repository, we are not writing anything. Remember, it is an interface, meaning that there have been methods that have been provided for us that we can just use. So let's go ahead to open the the student service so that we can auto wire the repository into it. So to auto wire it, you simply say uh, students repository. You simply create a private uh, private variable, a private member variable of the repository class. So students repository, uh, and that's all. So we we now add the auto wire annotation, auto wire. Mm -hmm. and then you uh, add the imports, the necessary auto wire. You see how it did here. Yeah? So, so that's fine. So the next thing we want to do, I'm uh, following the procedure. I'm going to so this is where we are. Get a list of uh, a list of students. So let's go to let's try the method to get a list of students. So let's just call it. Uh, Let's get a uh, student repository that find all that gives us a list of students. So let's just call it public uh, list, list of students, students. 
Okay, so let's go down to our private list of students, students. Get all students. Alright, so. So now I'm going to create a list of students. So I'm going to say list of students students is equal to new array list okay so because we need to get it, uh, the list of students as a list okay so now the find all give me a second let me use the find all so that I can explain to you uh, how it works so this find all is oh what's what happened here okay okay so so okay so now i'm going to use the find all method so i can just say student repository find all so now this find all what it does is for it so this find all connects to the database run a query to get the student records convert each student each return draw to student instances and return it back to the service so this single line of code is simply doing all of this so you don't need to write queries so find all goes to the repository get the instant uh, the, the records convert it to instances and then return it but now we want to convert it to a list or we want to iterate through these values that are returned and use it to populate this uh, list of students because we want to return an array list so this actually is an iterable so we can actually iterate it and add everything all the records return into the student list so i'm going to use for each, uh, for each item here, so I'm going to add it to the students. Add, All right. So there is a lambda expression. You can uh, look at a different tutorial where I explained it. So now I'm going to just return, uh, return students. <coughs> okay. So at this point, so this goes this way. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we've actually written the, the method to return list of students from the service <coughs> to the controller. All right, so the further ones, I'm just going to copy and paste it because uh, we can actually save time. So this is add student. I'm going to copy and paste it. So maybe I give a little explanation. In this case, we have student repository.save. That's all. So if we call the save method, you give it the student object you want to save, and it saves it. So instead of writing a whole lot, a, a, so many lines of code to add a new record, you simply call the save method of the of the repository. So that is how it is. How easy it is. In the same way, to work with ID, you simply say find by ID. So so just paste it, and this is just the code. You don't have to do anything much. Okay. Update a student. You use the same uh, method. The same method or the, the same method as add as for adding new record, the same save method. In this in this case, give me a sec. Okay, we have student repository dot save. It's the same as student repository dot save for adding a student. So in this case, if you provide a student and it's already there, it's going to update that record. But it, if it's not there, it's going to save. It's going to create a new record, and that is what the save method does. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to copy this. This one is for delete a student. So let's place it there. Okay. So I'm going to save. Fine. So the next thing is to build the controller class. Now we have the service uh, is ready now. So the controller is going to be built, and now. I've actually created part of it, but in the next tutorial, I'm going to explain how it works and we are going to then uh, build it together. I'd like to thank you for viewing and we'll see you in the next tutorial.